Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and SkilledWorker.com. Today, we will be discussing Canada's best job markets under express entry in 2019. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, so a special, first of all, uh, a great uh, warm welcome to our uh, colleagues in India at Abinoff Outsourcings uh, and our clients uh, who are working through Abinoff uh, throughout India via our exclusive affiliation which began on May 1st. Uh, so today's discussion in fact is going to cover an important consideration uh, that is on the minds of most applicants to Canada. Um, and first, let's talk about yesterday's draw. Okay, so yesterday, as some of you know, there was an express entry draw. The CRS score was actually 470. So this is actually the highest it's been in the past two years. Why is this? So as everyone may be aware uh, who are in the industry and who are applying to Canada, there hasn't been a draw in one month. What that, uh, the effect of that is, of course, is you have many applicants who are submitting profiles into the system uh, without a draw taking place and the quality, the competition has increased without having a draw that has removed a number of applicants. Uh, what the last draw was uh, two weeks back was for only trades applicants. Uh, so that was very restricted uh, to one set of candidates. Um, and so what we're going to see and what we expect to see is going forward over the next two or three draws the CRS scores will probably go back to the uh, previous levels in the 450 range, for late 440s, uh, as things start to re stabilize again. Uh, but for many, this obviously highlights the importance uh, of how do you increase your score. It's one thing to go and improve your language, but really getting that job offer in hand, the hiring employer, a qualified sponsor employer, that's the answer for many individuals to Canada. So let's discuss how a job plays under the express entry immigration system. So having a job offer is going to get you either 50 or 200 points. So you'll get 200 points if it's a managerial position, for example. Right, and so for some people having 50 points alone may not be enough just uh, on its own. So what you have to be doing is looking at what that uh, a job offer can do. It's not just about the 50 points. For some individuals, applying under a provincial immigration program with a qualified sponsoring employer will be enough for you to get into Canada under express entry. It will be enough to get you in under a provincial nomination program which participates uh, under the express entry system. Outside of express entry, what people need to understand is if you have a hiring sponsor employer, this will allow you to get a, a work permit. Now, for some individuals where 50 points alone may not be enough, getting into Canada on a work permit and working for 12 months will give you an added number of points which far exceeds 50 points. So for many individuals, it's a two-stage process. Get a job in Canada, work for 12 months, and then you will qualify under either express entry because you'll have enough points or you may qualify under a provincial immigration program. So today what we're going to do is focus on some of the important considerations in finding employment in Canada. We're going to talk about uh, what are the top positions that express entry has been uh, behind in bringing people to Canada in 2018. And then we're going to look at the top 10 cities where employment opportunities are highest in Canada. So interestingly enough, a lot of those opportunities for employment in Canada, not so much the occupations, but the cities and the jurisdictions, the bigger opportunities are in the provinces of Ontario, but the top 10 list also includes, interestingly, cities that are far beyond Ontario. All right, so Andrea, let's first remind readers where they can read the content of today's discussion. So you can go to the new section of our website, immigration.ca, and this article is published on April 11th, 2019. So as everyone uh, knows, if we take a look at some of our material, uh, the 2018, as it came to a close, uh, more than 90,000 invitations were issued under the express entry system. Now, let us not 
to, you know, we have to add to that what's, what's continuing on. The theme that's taking place in Canada is decades low unemployment rates. It's the current rates of unemployment in some of the countries are under 3%. So we have a lot of sh labor shortages going on uh, in many sub labor markets of the country. And that also explains why Canada is bringing in now over 500,000 work permit holders. So foreign applicants overseas are getting into Canada on a work permit because employers need people as soon as possible. So the total number of applicants overseas coming into Canada on work permits this year expect to exceed 500,000. Anyone coming into Canada on a work permit, you're already working towards qualifying for permanent residence. So for some of you, you may need to look at this in a slightly longer period of time by getting into Canada and finding that uh, sponsoring employer that there's no question about it, having a work permit, this is a strong pathway to permanent residence. All right, let's highlight the top 10 occupations that we know of that were really popular, uh, the groups of occupations under the express entry system uh, for 2018 and which we can now extrapolate is a good metric, it's a good uh, basis point for 2019. Okay, let's start with the first and the fifth of the occupations that are listed in this article. So the first one being professional occupations in natural and applied sciences. A total of 14,320 invitations to apply were actually sent under the, for these occupations. And the fifth one being technical occupations related to natural and applied sciences. And a total of 3,645 invitations were issued. So these two categories, the first and the fifth alone, add up to 18,000 invitations. That's 18% of the total ITAs under Express Entry. So if you're wondering, some job titles would be software engineer, computer programmer, web designer, uh, those who work in physical sciences, and with regards to salary range, it would be between 75 to 140 Canadian dollars a year. So, you know, right, Andrea, it, it, you know, readers should also be aware, again, as we mentioned before, uh, some of the provinces are very involved in targeting the occupations that are in the highest demand, uh, which we just mentioned, for example, the software engineers, the technology workers, uh, some of the provinces have PNP sub-programs like British Columbia, which particularly targets technology professionals. Um, we also have on the uh, work permit uh, side of things, uh, there's the global talent stream, which already has brought in more than 5,500 workers and this year alone, uh, the Government of Canada is looking to quickly bring in technology workers under Global Talent Stream. So uh, if you're an employer, if you're a candidate that could be matched with an employer and you're in one of those sub-occupations, sub this is a very interesting opportunity. Again, it's many ways to get into the system. Either if you're lucky, you can get right in because you have the right profile, but for many people, you're not quite there yet. And this is what we're trying to, to guide you on. How can you get into the system through secondary ways? Now, all right, let's look at items number two and three on the list. These are occupations in the uh, accounting, auditing, finance, business, middle management, uh, marketing, sales, uh, personnel, HR, recruitment. So we're looking at approximately uh, 14,500 invitations to apply issued in 2018. We expect 19, 2019 to be considerably more. Again, we don't, we don't see these occupations changing all that much. Uh, these invitations to apply Canada-wide, uh, salaries ranging from 55,000 to 125,000. Again, the range is going to depend, of course, on your background. Uh, how many years of experience you have, again, what occupation you're looking at. So it's, it's really, a, a, obviously, if you're an accounting and an auditor or in some of those fields with 10 years of experience, you're looking at a salary range, for example, in Toronto, well over $125,000 per year. Uh, if you're going to the, some of the smaller jurisdictions, some of the uh, geographic areas in Atlantic Canada, which have endemic shortages, your salary structure, again, will be lower. What 
you know, you need to obviously, the, the uh, takeaway from that is that the cost of living is much lower in some of these jurisdictions where the salaries are lower. All right, Andrea, let's circle back to the major cities in Canada where interested applicants would be encouraged to target. Okay, so as most of you have probably learned from our previous presentations, to maximize one's chances, often it would be best to avoid the main cities such as Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, and Montreal. So we do have this article. It's uh, on the 26th of April 2019 in the news section where you can read further information on this. But just to touch briefly, uh, St. John, New Brunswick, the employment level actually increased by 12.8% in the past year. Uh, and other cities to note are Halifax, Nova Scotia, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and Kelowna, BC. And obviously, there's the cities and the greater Toronto commuter belt. So we actually also did a live stream in 2017, uh, in August 2017. So this is basically, we're building on, on this previous uh, live stream. So the takeaway from all of this is, first of all, you take a look at your profile. You should be knowledgeable on the provincial programs for permanent immigration where an invitation to apply uh, could be forthcoming. Uh, you need to be aware of how you can improve your score. Obviously having a job will help you, but don't be disillusioned if you look at that and say, geez, that's only 50 points for me. What you then need to do is say, look, there's a lot of opportunity for employment in Canada. Let's go and target these occupations, if those are obviously compatible with your background. Look at some of the jurisdictions, some of the locales, the geographic areas of the country. We've always maintained looking a rural approach to going into the employment market. Obviously, most people are, are destined and are looking at the greater Toronto area. But if you take a look at the list of uh, hiring cities where the top 10 cities you're going to see on our list from the uh, April uh, article that uh, you've got cities in Saskatchewan, you've got Kelowna, British Columbia, you've got Halifax, Nova Scotia. So you have, uh, we haven't even mentioned uh, cities that are beyond number 10. So there are cities in Quebec, there are cities in every single province where uh, beyond the what's called the Toronto commuter belt, uh, you have tremendous opportunity where we say that the employment participation rate is sky high, where the unemployment rates are very, very low. So for some of you, you may need to look at coming to Canada by finding that employment support by then perhaps if you're in a position, that employment opportunity in itself will bring you to Canada uh, either under express entry immigration or for some of you, you're gonna have to work for 12 months in order to get all those points that you need to be a competitive applicant and reach the current scores. We, we know that yesterday's draw was 470, but we expect the range to be in the 440, 445, without being too forward thinking, that's the kind of range that we could see uh, going forward in the next two or three draws. So become knowledgeable about the uh, areas where employment opportunities are greatest. Look to uh, the, the, the strategy might be that you need to do this in stages. Um, let's talk to candidates about, uh, well, of course we are recruiting for a number of employers uh, presently in the technology sector. Uh, but if you're not an employer and you are an individual candidate, let's share with candidates how we help on the employment side. Okay, so we provide our clients with a Canadian style resume, cover letter, and database of potential hiring employers in their field. So they choose the industries as well as the provinces that they would like to include. We also provide other tips and tools. And as Colin mentioned, we do represent employers who are looking to hire candidates in the technology sector across Canada. So what's really important to note is that we're licensed recruiters in Canada. Uh, we have been involved in the recruiting industry for m almost 20 years. Uh, our website, skilledworker.com, is a leading platform in the industry. And we do a lot of recruiting for employers with grnmontreal.com. So if you go to either skilledworker.com, uh, where you can upload your resume, uh, and employers will have access to some of those resumes, or if you take a look at grnmontreal.com, that's where we actively conduct employment search mandates for employers in Canada. So if you are a candidate looking uh, to become employed in Canada, 
we would be in a position to work with you on the permanent immigration side by uh, offering you invaluable assistance. And what we always like to say is, we I think we have become uh, experienced in helping candidates stand out from the crowd. Now, we do this through our uh, employment search. Um, part of our employment search package for those that want to partake we do LinkedIn tutorials. We have for individuals who subscribe to that part of our package, uh, we have a 60 minute face to face LinkedIn tutorial on how to find employment in Canada, how to identify areas of the country that are uh, recently hiring. So uh, this is a component that we are confident no one offers in the immigration industry. And we, again, it's the goal we'd like to try to uh, push forward is that we help you try to stand out from others in the field who are going into the online the online uh, scope. Again, it's, it's maximizing your chances for success on relocating to Canada. So. Great. So, I mean, if you're looking to find out if you do qualify, please go to immigration.ca and complete our free online evaluation form. We'll then get back to you with your options. And as always, please follow us on our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And we'll keep you posted for the date of our next live stream. And on our website, we actually also have a discussion forum. So if you'd like to partake in that, please do go ahead to our website and join us on our forum. Great. Well, I think that covers everything we wanted to uh, touch today. Uh, we certainly uh, welcome comments. Uh, if you have any thoughts, please share them with us. And otherwise, uh, stay tuned for our next presentation, which will happen in June, and we'll release the details in just a couple of weeks. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much, and see you soon.